Okay, editing Emma here. Um, at the time that I am editing this video, uh, Alkajashi um, liked my post on Instagram concerning the henna artist when I tell you I about went into cardiac arrest. Anyway, with that being said, <laughs> um, please enjoy the video. Hi guys, it's Emma and I'm back today for you with another video and today we are going to be reviewing one of the books that I've read pretty recently. Um, and honestly, it is a new favorite of the year. Uh, and that is The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi. So the, the Henna Artist is about this girl named Lakshmi who runs away from her husband when she's 17 all the way to the city of Jaipur. And there she becomes a confidant and a henna artist for all the elite ladies of the Jaipur society. And while she is there, she is able to build up her reputation for a good decade. And then afterwards, her husband finds her with a sister that she had no idea she had in tow. So now she has to basically make sure that none of her secrets come out, you know, that she fled her husband, that she comes from a poor family, just any of her secrets that she had kept hidden for a decade, she cannot let them come out now. It's set either right after or very, very closely after uh, India gets its independence. It's historical fiction, which is one of my favorite genres of all time. I talked about this book in my historical fiction recommendations video, and all I can say is I can't gush about this book enough. And like I said, it's a new favorite of the year, so we're going to be talking about this. This is a spoiler-free review, so anybody that wants to read The Henna Artist and just wants to, you know, get further reassurance, or somebody who wasn't really sure they wanted to read The Henna Artist and needs reassurance, please, by all means, watch this video. Before we start, however, I would like to ask you guys if you've read The Henna Artist and what you thought about it down below. Please, tell me, because quite honestly, I love this book and I want other people to be able to love it as well. So with that being said, let's get into it. We're gonna talk about the writing first and the writing, most of the things that I love from this book have to do with the writing. So the writing is gonna be a big chunk of this video. Now, there are some trigger warnings for this book, so be mindful before you go into it. Um, I would say that the trigger warnings for this book are um, a trigger warning for sexual assault, uh, a trigger warning for abortions, a trigger warning for teen pregnancy, and a trigger warning for planned miscarriages, however miscarriages nonetheless. So with those out in the open, just be careful. Know your limits, everybody. Know your limits, please. First of all, the writing itself, along with all the components that this book has, is very helpful in order to immerse yourself into the culture, the traditions, and the language even. It's just, uh, it's so refreshing, honestly, to see a book or a story take place in Jaipur and to be able to delve into it so thoroughly. And what I mean by elements or the other aspects that help to immerse yourself into the book is that it has a character list, it has a glossary, and it has recipes for not only food, but henna as well. It's so cool. Like, I'm sorry, I love being able to look at the back of the book for a glossary instead of having to look up what a word means. I absolutely adore that. And then a character list. It just makes your story seem so much more complex and I adore it. Now, the main part that I absolutely relished from this entire book was the intrigue, okay? Because like the synopsis alludes, um, Lakshmi has to keep her secrets secret from everybody else, lest her reputation be completely ruined. And not to mention, like I said in the synopsis, she becomes a confidant to all these high profile women. So there's a lot of stuff that she knows that she can't tell anybody else regarding other people. It's just the intrigue in this book, not even political, just intrigue is so delectable. I ate it up. And the intrigue itself contributes to just how high the stakes are in this book because saving face is 
huge in not only Jaipur society, but other societies around the world. Saving face is sometimes more important than your life, all right? And shame can be passed down through family members. Like you can inherit shame. So for Lakshmi's reputation to have the ability to just like that, it is so adrenal it like it is so adrenalizing. I don't know if that's a word. It is now. But um it is it gives you so much adrenaline that you just want her to be able to succeed. It is just so satisfying to be able to watch her deflect this and that and this and that with her words. All right? The amount of cunning characters in this book and for me there's a difference between cunning and smart. Cunning to me means like sly, under the radar, like like the type of people that can insult your mother to your face while still smiling. I eat cunning up. And Lakshmi herself is a cunning woman. I have a personal thing for cunning women, all right? And not just Lakshmi, but again, with everybody in here that is cunning, with all the cunning that you find in this book, take a shot every single time I say cunning, by the way. But with all the cunning that I found in this book, it made me realize just how much I love to see characters traverse intrigue um, and to be able to do it in their own way and yet do it so well. I love it. It is so satisfying. And Lakshmi, like I said, she's a cunning bad bitch and we love to see it. Not only is she a bad bitch, but she is a bad bitch business woman and she's business smart and she's ambitious. And she's cunning. We love to see that. We love to see that for her. Now, the sister bond took me out. I adore sister bonds. I have an older sister myself and to see sister bonds in books is just very realistic for me, right? And the sister bond in here is probably the realest that I've ever seen in a book before. Like you genuinely see these two sisters, Lakshmi and her younger sister Radha, kind of wrestle with the fact that one of them didn't even know the other existed and the fact that there is that age gap. And so it's Radha on one side and then Lakshmi on the other with Radha's naivete and Lakshmi's knowledge of the world. And it's very refreshing, quite honestly, to see such a realistic sister bond in this book because they don't always get along. They aren't always nice to each other. They do say some shit that they don't mean to each other. And it is just so real and raw and humane. And it is so good, all right? It's so good because you really see how like they can bounce back from the insults that they throw at each other or just the things that happen to each other. Like you, you really want to root for them because of all the shit that happens to them, literally. Not to mention, there are a lot of modern day dis discussions talked about in this book. For example, the biggest one is probably um, the topic of abortions and women's choice. But because I don't want to spoil it, I'm just going to say that it really does talk about... I said women's choice and abortions, but mostly abortions and the women's choice regarding abortion. It's talking about such a patriarchal society. And I feel like, again, I keep saying the words, ref I, I keep saying a lot of the same words over and over again, but refreshing. It, it really is refreshing to see this discussion take place in an environment written about such as this. I gave this book five stars. I absolutely adored this book. I think that anybody who likes historical fiction will really like this book too. It's just really cool to see a woman coming into her own in such a male dominated society and using her own tricks and plays to get at everybody and get her own way at the very end of the day. It is so empowering, honestly. There's a new word that we're gonna use in this video. It's so empowering to see Lakshmi do all that she does in this book. And honestly, I think if anybody, again, likes historical fiction, pick this book up. And if anybody likes empowering women, pick this book up, sis. It's great. Not to mention the cover, sis. Are we really gonna ignore that beautiful cover? I think the McFuck not, okay? Not on my watch. Not on my watch. Not on my watch.
Not to mention there's a sequel. I think it's called The Keeper of Jaipur. Sis, when I tell you I about had a heart attack at 3 a.m. when I saw that on Goodreads, I was ready to go. I was ready to brawl. I was ready to kill for that sequel. Rarely have I ever been so excited for a sequel in my life, and that says something. So if The Henna Artist sounds like your type of book, please pick it up. I'm begging you. It is such a good book, and I want it to be shared with everybody. Well, you guys, that's the end of the video. That's the end of this review. I hope that you guys have taken some cues to maybe pick The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi up. Por favor. Also, before we go, I would like to say that I will still have the hashtag free recessivagina links down below in the description, and I will also have the hashtag winterstormyuri link in the description below as well. So, with that being said, you guys, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope that you'll pick the henna artist up, and I hope that you guys are staying safe and that you guys have a good rest of your day. Bye!